son. Where'd you find them? Oh my gosh. Is that that? New? Let's go. <laughs> Whoa. By continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to be recorded. I think I hit okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Welcome to I'm my only row. fans. Oh. <laughs> Do I hit continue, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be the way to continue, right? Or Time to consent, baby. There, you know? I don't know. <laughs> that was fucking weird. Yeah. It was like the hand of God just like touching on the floor being like, are you sure you want to go on? <laughs> John Cena face, Pete, like just tears through the screen. <laughs> you <know> about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that got us I, I haven't looked and see uh how many i have to pull up the phone real quick oh dude you're over 30k man it was like 30K. 30 31.7 uh k views holy shit man that, that was a good ass tweet though thank you thank you I, I appreciate it i wish it converted to uh more people like buying our <laughs> shit or listening to the show <laughs> I, I know man i know that's that's the downside but God, there were some gems on those comments, man. Think about a real country like America. <laughs> <laughs> the First only country all. that matters. Yeah. <laughs> it, there's nothing better than being American. So, I mean, this is the greatest feeling. If you don't love it, leave it. USA, number one. There's multiple Americas. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and there's the better America that rules over all the other America. <laughs> It's all ours anyway. Oh my god! This is being recorded too. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Well, it's not like any of us have important jobs where we have to be in the public eye at any point or make oh, no. statements on the behalf of a you know, maybe well-known community agency in this. I mentioned I'm looking for work. <laughs> <laughs> Is this how we get canceled? Not all the crazy shit that we've ever said and done on this podcast or on oh, the internet, no. but this is oh, how yeah. having to work for like a super pack or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking so, of pack, uh, pack. freeway. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of us will um, force ourselves to work or work watch Double or Nothing on Sunday. I want to like I would watch it. It's just I'm not going to be in town. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be a harder thing to sell but it's on saturday or sunday 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 yeah i hate that they're doing their shit on sundays yeah, now it was, it was, i could i was definitely getting into what I, I like i said i'll watch the aew pay-per-views and, and i really liked it when they were on saturday nights yeah. i don't know if i'm gonna watch it this sunday uh, i wish they would just avoid whatever else is on like don't compete with wwe pay-per-views when they're on on sunday and don't compete with uh bigger ufc cards when they're on like just you can avoid both like yeah it's gonna right. be very rare when both are gonna be on the same weekend i'm yeah. probably gonna be really drunk sunday and barbecuing so <laughs> i mean living your life living a lie yeah you're just lying to yourself <laughs> enjoying yourself you should be so <laughs> <laughs> Here's oh, i've been deal. doing that my whole adult life <laughs> here's the deal open your eyes your life is a lie it's a great song by mgmt um they got yes. one about barbecuing no jim I ross might he's calling <laughs> Sauce it. Sauce it. jim ross and his hog his sentient hog will be calling the action on sunday as well as uh tony scavoni and that uh, mask dude from Detroit. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just fucking right. I love Excalibur. He's him and Tony. I love. They should probably just be the announced team. I don't really care about Jr. anymore. It's yeah. it's hard to when he's been around. Like he's he's overstays welcome, kind of. Like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I hate to say it, but it is. It's one of those that you you just kind of hate watching one of your. Uh, I, superstars i i want to call him an idol per, per se but like yeah uh you know one of one of the top guys one of the top commentators of all time and it's just like with a fight or anything else you know you see one of your favorite fighters go in the ring 
and they're way over prime and they're just getting their ass knocked and out. They're just there to die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like that's JR, you know, like I well, mean, if, if he was as good as he was back then, like, it would be fine. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. That he's obviously not as, like, good as he used to be. Like, he's not the guy he was back then. Like, yeah, for better or worse as a person, but, like, it doesn't matter. Like, you, if you're not doing the job as well, then who cares? Like, Exactly. No, I, I agree. And I think that's just it. Like, sometimes it feels like even he's like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> like he's just reading off a script or something and has ross ever been good in a three-man booth i don't i wouldn't i think he always has excelled at the two-man yeah, yeah right uh, uh, and i would say his last best call his last great call was pete dunn versus tyler Bate at nxt chicago and it was him and nigel i think on the call which i oh, think yeah. is the only time they ever called a match together and that was a it was a great team as a great match in general, I feel like that might be his last great call. So that's been going on probably what, like four years now. Yeah, yeah, at least. Gonna get worse. And he's <laughs> he's like openly like criticizing Kenny Omega and calling Randy Orton a better wrestler, which he is. Uh, you can't be saying that in the company you're working for, right? You kind of yeah, gotta man. wave the 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 company flag. I, I would guess. say publicly, that's the etiquette, right? Like, I, I, yeah. I, if I work for GM still, like I couldn't be publicly saying fucking They're Hondas are better. better. Than yeah. Them, yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when I was talking to like dealers and shit, like, oh, yeah, I, I drive a, um, a Chevy. What, what was my fake car? Was it a Malibu? Chevy Malibu? Yeah, Malibu or Cavalier or some shit like that. Uh, you know, outside of that it's like oh i fucking love my honda that i had at the time my honda core <laughs> yeah. it had like almost like two hundred thousand miles under some crazy shit and it ran and it's still thing. kicking yeah, yeah still like it's the day that you bought it <laughs> 160 and i'm about to drive it 10 hours tomorrow so let's go yeah like, and <laughs> i mean japan. i can cheers japan that's right <laughs> and then we got a, a a jeep now and we've had it for probably a little less than a year and it's already got a bunch of fucking issues with it. So, yay. Oh, uh, yeah. Fun stuff, anyway, right? Yeah. I know. People love the fucking car talk and us always talking about the very specific regional issues that we have. Like, remember that oh, time yeah, like we hit that, that pothole on fucking Northline? Like <laughs> remember that time my car just, like, self-destructed from just falling into a hole? it's all our roads bombed out and depleted (laughs) all of our (laughs) all of our international listeners are probably like why don't they just go get on like a bus or something or take (laughs) yeah Yeah, right exactly oh yeah trust our public transit system that's great (laughs) if you folks only knew uh so this card man we got the young bucks against moxley and kingston please Please, please, God, Mox and Kingston, please beat the Bucks for the belts, man. I am so fucking sick and tired of the young Bucks and their fucking stupid shoes and their fucking stupid dangly earrings. I do not give a fuck about the young Bucks anymore. Preach, brother, preach. I just hit, like, I want the young Bucks to get killed in like three minutes. I hate young Buck, fam. Like, I want Mox and Kingston to do that fucking half Nelson suplex lariat finish and just end them. I do not give a fuck about the Young Bucks. I want them to go away for like six months. I don't give a fuck anymore. (laughs) I have no desire to see the Young Bucks on my television screen, computer screen, a phone screen for a very long time. I am so fucking sick of these guys. They've been doing the same shit for like 10 years. Oh, let's go. I don't fucking the, care anymore. You're the man. Jesse Pinkman meme of he, they just can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> <laughs> New bio, guys. The Young Bucks fucking suck and are annoying. Go away. You know the match is going to be like 30 minutes and they're going to win, right? <laughs> <laughs> Course, Two little tiny saying. guys are gonna fucking somehow wrist clutch John Moxley and fucking do their stupid little fucking knee super kick finisher. Like everybody the... is gonna be saying that this is the new Masawa and Kabashi versus uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kawada and Tawe. It's Bro. going to be like absolutely fantastic. Yeah. You're just gonna be sitting here cross up like 
Right. <laughs> I, I hope it is, but I hope the fucking Bucks cool. play Kobashi and Masawa and the match ends with fucking Matt trying to cover up Nick and then Moxley just fucking elbows him Gary Cooper style. <laughs> in his head. back. <laughs> He's like, no. Ah. Does, does Matt still have a fucking shitty back? Yeah, it's still, yeah, in kayfabe, right? <laughs> I yeah, assume so. Still, yeah. It's like, what does his back hurt from? It's not like he lifts weights or anything. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> What the fuck? Who gives a fuck about Matt Jackson's fucking shitty back? I do not care. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Moxie should fucking squash them. They're heels now, so I don't think. I bet they don't do that. Fucking uh, cool, man. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying. Probably not. God damn! I do obviously not like getting worked. <laughs> I, you know, I kind of, yeah, I, I want them to uh, still win just to get you so riled up. <laughs> it's <laughs> this like the this, good content. <laughs> and it's like the, the thing is like, well, you guys talk about them all the time. And it's like, well, we do a podcast, guys. Like, we're not going to not talk thing about thing. AEW. And also, it's like they're the main dudes in the company. They're like the main tag team. So we kind of got to at least. That's what I was going to say. They're, these, they're, they're kind of these executive VPs who are on TV every <laughs> week. And, you know, they kind of feature themselves in important roles. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, you, yeah. you should ignore Drew Mack because he's just like, you know, on TV every week, even though he's not champ anymore. You should just, you know, ignore him. Same thing. <laughs> well, Drew Mack is actually cool. And he looks cool and he <laughs> seems like he would actually like be somewhat intimidating as opposed to guys who do a, a sharpshooter despite never doing any moves to set it up no other submission moves no other psychology built around doing the fucking sharpshooter they just do it because it's silly it because it's like in the 90s t he brian pillman's dad trained at the heart dungeon how funny would it be if we beat him with the fucking sharpshooter it's like i'm gonna beat john with whatever fucking truth martini's finisher is like t he he trained there six <laughs> months ago or whatever the fuck it is like i, I don't give a fuck man somehow i don't, I don't think Somehow I don't think replicating like 2000s era uh, ROH people's offense is as tangible as doing like shitty 90s work. <laughs> well, first of all, 2004 ROH fucks. You know what doesn't fuck? The Young Bucks. Next match. <laughs> They're also alt-right. Next match. Are they? <laughs> oh, I'm joking. <laughs> the QAnon guys. <laughs> Yeah, he's over uh, here just trying to build additional heat. <laughs> 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 no, Damon wasn't upset enough about it. Let's just, just... They're also white supremacist next match. <laughs> <laughs> the young Bucks just come out and say, no, we didn't bring any extra bags. <laughs> Sting, Darby Allen versus Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Ethan Page trying to kill Darby Allen always gets a, a vote in my book, so... That match would be fun. I thought that uh, Sting and Lance Archer would have some sort of match, but I don't know why they're not now. Lance Archer just became the number one contender for the TNT title. It probably would have been really hard for those two to like <clears throat> even have like a what you call it like a recorded match. Yeah. Oh, I. So I know why the kind of flip flop because Darby lost the belt, but Lance retained his ranking for the so he still uh, so it would make sense for them him to change focus but it was just weird because he never really focused solely on darby he focused more on staying and i'm uh, it's very weird get himself over by going after the bigger guy not making darby take like extra beat downs even though he lost uh, funny story know. about this match it's got ethan page in it Funny story about the match before it is, is it has Eddie Kingston in it. And one time I saw a, a, an AAW, is that what it's called? AAW? Yeah, in Chicago. Like I saw a match, I went to a card over there and it was a good card and it had the main event of Ethan Page and Eddie Kingston. And I hated that match. I hated that <laughs> match to the point where like, I, I think like, I'm not sure if it's actually Eddie Kingston. Eddie, if you're listening, I still hate you. Um, <laughs> But Eddie is a name searcher and he found me on Twitter and gave me a retweet when I was talking shit. So, yeah, we got caught up in that. I think the Toff account got jammed up. Oh, did you? Good. Yeah, after the Evolve show. Oh, my God. 
Oh Lord. But either way, but no, seriously, I've watched Eddie Kingston go from a guy I didn't like very much to somebody that has impressed me and grown a lot. I mean, granted, he's an old man now and he can't wrestle a bit, but he can talk. <laughs> he's like Sting for uh John Moxley. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But Ethan Page has also improved like a lot. He's really bounced all over the place. Where hasn't he been? Like NXT, that's about it. Was he there at some point that I didn't know about? Maybe, possibly. Point being is he's been everywhere. He's improved a ton, and it's cool to see him alongside another guy who's got a lot of potential. And just hasn't really been tapped at all, and that's Scorpio Sky. Thank God he's finally free of uh, SEU. Even though it was good for him, it's just lasted too long. So those two guys, I mean, I wish them both the best. And I don't know. I, it sucks that they're going to get their first like real pay-per-view match. Like this is their first like pay-per-view match as a tag team, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Scorpio, yeah. uh, he turned heel cause he, he won that face of the revolution ladder match mm-hmm. at the last pay-per-view. And then he turned right. heel That's after he got his title mean. shot. Yeah. So, but I kind of weird that he split from a team and then joined another team. And yeah, that is Page weird. left a team in another promotion only to just get put into another <laughs> team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see. But it sucks because I think they're going to do the job and I don't know what that does for them. Like, I don't mm. know. Maybe one of them will kill Sting. Mm. God, maybe. Scorpio Sky is going to get the Scorpion Deathlock. That's going to be like his thing now. Like his submission finisher. I know he had like the heel hook and shit, but. I don't I'd know. Just we'll sit see. down on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like how uh, MJF did his own version of the crossroads, but he called it the double cross or whatever. <laughs> and it never looked good. <laughs> Dude, he almost killed Hangman with it the one time oh. he tried. There it. were a couple of times he did that move, and I was literally like, I was like watching it on repeat, just trying to think about, it. I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> this, is the, this is the most like because the crossroads is already a cockamamie mess. Like it's nonsense. But like his version was just like, dude, th- that dude's deck is moving way too many different ways at the same time. Yeah, it's it's a pretty wild move, man. The the way he was doing it. Speaking of MJF, he and the Pinnacle will face the inner circle or the inner circle, as JR calls him. <laughs> In a stadium stampede match, which is supposed to be part pre-recorded, part cinematic or something like that. So they're trying to do like what they did before with the last one again. Like, I was hoping for just a um, kind of an all-out street fight as opposed to the one last year that was kind of comedic because they had a blood and guts match where they were bleeding all over the place and then go from that. And now they'll just do the tonal shift all the way over to the other side, yeah. Yeah, and then this is probably going to be the blow-off. I I, I, I wouldn't be a big I have to imagine it's going to end with a Jericho MJF one-on-one, like, at some point. But, like, I don't know. That's that's my opinion. But I'm not watching week to week, so maybe I'm missing stuff. Is yeah. this is this pay per view in front of a packed arena? Yeah, full capacity okay. at um, Daly's place. Oh, wow. So that's going to be weird because it wasn't the first stampede. Yeah, that was last year during the pandemic, and it was it was a really cool way to work around like not having fans and making use of having extra space and stuff. But I don't know. I wonder if the uh, if the gimmick is will have like worn off a little bit with that. Yeah, we'll we'll see how they do it, but I did read that it was supposed to be partly cinematic, so we'll we'll see how that plays out. But the it could be good. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking like if it's just like a straight up street fight, like a bunkhouse stampede type match, I think it could be really really good. But I I hope it's not as comedic as uh, last year's oh, no. stadium stampede. I, you can I just... do a couple. You can do a couple of cute things, but like keep it to like Sammy Guevara messing around with one of fucking Wheeler Cash and just go from there. I just want to see Wardlow fucking launch someone off something very high. Like I want to see him F10 Jake Hager off the top of the stadium. <laughs> The TNT title match on Wikipedia it says Miro or Dante Martin versus Lance Archer. Like we're supposed to believe that Dante Martin has a shot of beating <laughs> Miro. Is Dante Martin? <laughs> <laughs> That's not Cap. Like I have no clue. Who, that is. <laughs> who the fuck is that guy? He's one of the kids from Top Flight. 
like the nineteen year olds that were a tag team that were real impressive and Oh, uh, so he's just go he's just gonna get strolled out to die uh tonight? Tomorrow. So the, it'll already have happened by the time this podcast mm. comes out. Oh, Mir- that's right. They're doing that. F- they're doing the Friday show. That's right. I forgot about that. Like, that's a thing. That- Is that starting this week or was it last week? It was. It was just for this week because of the playoffs, oh. I believe. And then they're moving to. Are they moving to Friday? I'm moving next to year. Yes, they're Friday. moving to TBS, but I can remember yeah. if they're moving nights. Yeah, they're moving to Fridays. One of the Ugh. nights. Yeah. What I think their second show is moving to Fridays. I can't remember. I don't have all. Yeah, that. you know, I think you're right. I think the second show is a Friday thing. And then the Hangman Adam Page versus Brian Cage. That should be a good one. That's a rematch from a couple of weeks ago where Page was ranked one and Cage beat him. And then Cage somehow wasn't the number one contender. <laughs> that match would be cool if it was a PWG match. Unfortunately, it is not taking place in PWG, <laughs> and it's two of the most guys who just do moves guys I have ever seen in professional wrestling wrestling one another. I do not believe it will be very good at all. <laughs> Whoa, hey, listen, that's blasphemous, bro. Adam Page should probably be the fucking champion, but instead I we got Kenny Omega Adam running Page. around talking about sucking Don Callis's dick. Like I know oh, Kenny's a Kenny's a clown, but Adam Page could never, never touch. Kenny Omega in the ring like like and I'm not even the biggest Omega mark I just think Adam Page is fucking a couple cool spots and a couple of like him doing hair flips and shit he may as well be (laughs) Kevin Nash without any of the fucking intangibles intangibles Uh, this is why I love having guests, man. This is- <laughs> hey, listen, if Adam Page ever listens to this podcast, you know he's going to be doing the fucking side elbow in the corner. The fucking, what did Cornette call it? The side <laughs> yes, elbow. <right. laughs> I would, well, you see, the flip. thing is, he's one of the few people where if he did a sidewalk slam, it would be an improvement to his matches. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I was not expecting that. Usually, no, but you know what he would do? He would do it off the fucking side of the apron and like take a weird bump and shit too, just to make it extra spicy because he's a jackass. (laughs) Maybe he would, oh no, no, he would do a fucking running moonsault while holding the guy on his side and fucking dump him on their ass outside and it looked like shit. We're we're gonna get that Scott Steiner ban here. Like, we're gonna get the everyone's photo if these guys come into the arena, (laughs) kick them out. Oh no, I can't go to Tallahassee. Jacksonville. <laughs> I can't go to Tallahassee, but that's unrelated. <laughs> Fucking panhandle Pete over here getting himself banned from AEW. <laughs> This fucking clusterfuck battle royal, the winner gets a world title match. It is Christian Cage, Matt Seidel, Powerhouse Hobbs, Pentagon, who also should probably be the champion instead of Kenny Omega, Jungle Boy, Matt Hardy, Mark Quinn? Oh, oh, the, one of the... Uh, Mark, Mark Quinn. Uh, Mark the, Quinn, one of the top shelf vodka guys. What are their, what's their yes, team name? Quinn. What is their team yeah. name? Private uh, parts. Private, private party. party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, top shelf vodka guys are in the stadium stampede match. Fucking. Who are the top shelf vodka guys? Fucking pinnacle, the Burnett's boys. Oh, the Burnett's yeah, boys. Yeah. yeah. But uh, private party. Don't they drink vodka or some shit? Or they yeah, drink- yeah, yeah, yeah. The big okay. vodka guys. Okay, and then uh, Isaiah Cassidy, the Blade, Evil Uno, Coca Cabana, Preston Vance. Who the fuck's Preston Van? Oh, Press 10. 10. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman, Max Caster, Anthony DuBois. Brian Pillman, huh? Interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Money really can get you anybody, huh? (laughs) (laughs) It's not Brian Pillman. Dude, what a shitty shitty battle royal. All those names are like jobbers. And then... I feel like they always have a battle royal. Isn't there supposed to be some big surprise or something? Yeah, but they had the Big Show's face on the uh, one of the cards, so people think it might be him. I swear to God, God. Could you imagine? (laughs) It's a goddamn shame we'll never hear that track again on TV. (laughs) Could you imagine a Big Show Kenny Omega match? 
It would be yes. amazing. I want, it. I want, it. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. <laughs> I mean, I, I would fuck with it if it's like Big Show versus Sheamus era Big Show. Because those oh, matches yeah. fucking bang, dude. Big Show doing the fucking Superman Big punch to counter the bro kick. That's some good yeah. shit. Big Show out here doing gauntlet matches. <laughs> like, sure, man. Do whatever you want. I thought you called him the Big Shoot. This is Paul White Shoot. Shooter gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> he comes out in the fucking Muay Thai shorts, starts throwing low kicks at people. Big Show's just low kicks are high kicks. Somebody out with a head kick and just like <laughs> Big Show what? just starts what? wrestling like Davy Richards. He's big shoes. <laughs> oh, is Kenny He's in a fucking Muay Thai stance. He just deep kicks Kenny Omega through the rope. <laughs> he just deeps him he out of the ring. He bumps like tumbling out and. He's just... <laughs> oh, oh man. You I have to imagine this is like a vehicle to get Cage a shot, or maybe Jungle Boy, so Jungle Boy can get killed and you know be like, "You're not quite there yet, kid." Yuck, yuck, yuck. I'm thinking it's Christian that wins it, unless the the big name is someone like really, really big. Like if if Daniel Bryan shows up, he should just flip all these guys out of the ring at the same time. Oh, yeah, just get just this over and done all. with. Yeah, make it sound like he's the goat. Yeah. Not um, to say that I would besmirch, besmirch the greatness that is Pentagon or... I was about to say, Penta, Penta getting a shot this way is probably the easiest way to not like have to do a wacky storyline to get him there. Yeah. but plus, like, That's the one I would like to see. I'm just saying what I think yeah, will right. happen. Yeah. And then yeah. you get... Um, how do you say his manager's name? Alex uh, Abra- oh, yeah. Abrahantes. Spanish, right? Yeah. His uh, right. translator, Alex... I would love to see him just talking shit to Kenny Omega. I think that would be great. Talking shit to Don Callis. <laughs> yeah, because he's at this point he's a better talker than both of them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm over the Callis Omega thing. Me I'm too. over all the elite guys. Apparently, the only one that I like that Fro hates is uh, Hangman. <laughs> I I am over fucking like Cody Rhodes, and I guess we could talk about that match next because it is up next on the the Wikipedia order. Since I'm going from I bottom haven't. to top. I'm doing the same thing. Uh, I have no idea who this fucking Del Rowe is. I don't know he, what's going on. He is. He trains at Cody School in Georgia. I think it is. He was in the Olympics back in 2012, and then he had to stop boxing because he's now 78 percent blind in his left eye, Ooh. and he ended up getting into pro wrestling. And his signature move is punching people in the belly, and he punched Billy Gunn's <laughs> son in the belly until he internally bled, and then they they. <laughs> They overcorrect it because people are like, he cannot end matches by punching people in the belly. That is silly as fuck. Why wasn't it Bart Gunn, son? (laughs) (laughs) He does know that you, uh, you get a ring name when you start, right? And maybe you don't want your build name to be uh, Anthony Agogo. Well, fucking what the hell? Well, it's one of those things. It's like the guy's a legit athlete, so it would be kind of dumb to change the dude's name. Like, say, if you're a uh, NCAA All American and people knew who you were, and you were also a football player at the University of Oklahoma, and they just gave you a name that rhymed with your real one, like uh, Jake Swagger. What if Hager. your name oh, yeah, was right. Rip Pussy? <laughs> would you like your last name to be Pussy on the big card when you go out there walking out? <laughs> <laughs> but then we can be like, yeah, fucking <laughs> this guy's fucking uh, tear kitty or something now. <laughs> and people go to look him up and look up his accomplishments and they go look him up at Oklahoma. And it's like, wait, this guy's real name's Rip Pussy? Why they give him a fake name? He's legit. <laughs> Sorry, that's a better name than Anthony Agogo. You're right. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this match like booked around Cody being super American and Anthony Agogo hates America? Yeah, because Anthony Agogo has talked shit on America, and then he covered him in the Union Jack flag after a ah. match or some shit. But the uh, Cody, I just read this today. Cody said that that promo that a lot of people hated, he said that it was focus group tested. And people were like, what the fuck are you talking wow. about? Like a focus group. And then he came out and was like, that's not the word that I meant. You know, sometimes I say dumb stuff, but, you know, I didn't mean focus group. I just voice memo my promos and send them to people I trust. And I'm like, 
That seems like that's quite literally a focus group. Yeah, that's a focus that's, group, brother. That's how Larry King tweeted. <laughs> 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 like maybe you should just pick up the telephone and call the person and be like hey this is what i might say fucking cody rhodes is fucking insufferable dude that neck tattoo was like the end like i had no like like he could have got a neck tattoo and it could have been okay he got a transformers logo offset up into his fucking like if he ever gets fat like his daddy he's going to have this weird like bulb on the bottom of his chin where half of it is going to be blue and red and it's just gonna be the weirdest dumbest looking thing why like why, cody why? rhodes thinks having this guy beat him is gonna make this guy because he's cody rhodes or something like get the fuck out of here you're fucking cody rhodes what's cody done, what's cody done? exactly so I think it's this dude's down. like green as fuck too, isn't he? Yeah, he hasn't had a lot of matches. Yeah, and I think this all really boils down to Cody probably wants to give the rub to one of his students, right? He wants to make his training school look like it's worth a damn. Like, look how fast this guy excelled, and mm-hmm. he's doing well. And by proxy, I'm this amazing trader. I run this amazing school because this guy's already on TV and already in a big match on a pay-per-view. It's not like, you know, this guy's an elite level athlete because he was at the fucking Olympics and medaled. There's <laughs> two other people that are better at him in his weight class and boxing out of the millions of people in that weight class that box. But, you know, there's it, neither here nor there. I just... Isn't his, isn't his school mostly ran by uh, Marshall, and, Marshall uh, yeah. and Dustin? Yeah. L- so listen, like, listen, um, listen. What's a gla- uh, Glacier? Glacier, yeah, guys, yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> this guy's gonna be great, dude. <laughs> fucking glacier in there. Anyway, back to the original point, man. Fuck Cody Rhodes. He is fucking obnoxious, dude. Insufferable. Yeah. Everything you said about the Young Bucks, like I feel like some of the stuff you said about the Bucks is unfounded. But like Rhodes. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, hold no, the no, fu- no, no, hold no, no, the no, fucking no, phone. No, no, hold no. the fucking phone, bro. You can't tell me that this shit is unfounded. They've been doing the same goddamn spots for ten years, bro. What the fuck else have they done different besides we wear knockoff Nikes and we do a sharpshooter now? At like, least they were good in PWG. Yeah, they were good, but also <laughs> like Cody. That's what I'm saying. Like, like everything, like. Like what I'm saying is everything you said, you can just turn up a gear and slap it right on Cody Rhodes, and that's pretty much how I feel. Like I don't want to see him wrestle. I don't want to see him on TV. His promos can be okay, but he's lost all credibility because he never wins anything. He never does anything. He just shows up on TV and has bad ideas. At least the Bucks, <laughs> at least the Bucks know how to book them damn selves. <laughs> I hate part of the, one of the big reasons why I hate Cody as well is that his uh promo style is like him trying to do like this passionate politician thing yeah. and it just falls flat because i don't know who the fuck he's trying to hit the the mark with with some of these promos man like my daughter's gonna know that i didn't lay down and die under another man's flag it's like what is this the fucking revolutionary war bro <laughs> like he punched you in the belly and he fucking covered you in the flag and he's like you're gonna sit here and disrespect my country even though this country is just disrespecting people left and right inside of it all the time. Yeah, the same as the War of 1812. They burnt down the White House. They punched me in the stomach. Hey, <laughs> oh, wow. well, you, the only person that's allowed to pull this card is me, fucking <laughs> Dustin. We, we're, I'm going to be the American. I'm just going to be my dad now. He's just going to come out and fucking polka dots. Fucking his wife's gonna dress up like sweet <laughs> sapphire. Just go all the way with it, Cody. At this fucking point. Go all the way. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 else can he do to make me just fucking hate him? Just pretend to be your dad at this point. Be uh... Oh man. I, I mean, I'm just tired of the country versus country shtick, but have they really even done that in like AEW at all yet? Like I think this is the first time. Yeah, yeah. And then they picked a guy that was from England, of all things. Like, yeah, one one of our greatest ally countries. So, and then a guy that we know Cody personally fucking like approached and hire and trains at his school. He's like, 
Well, you didn't come here to live the England dream. Like, what the fuck, Cody? No one cares, man. No one gives a no one gives a (laughs) flying fuck, bro. Like, Cody Rhodes, I I will dare say that every single guy in the elite are good wrestlers. I would say dare say even very good to great wrestlers. Um, Uh, Other than Doc, yeah, and if you're including him in the elite. The, I mean, I don't think those guys count in the elite, do they? Okay, okay, okay. I, I mean, I, just I, in, in the fucking ammo gang, yeah, Doc no. is for sure the weakest out of everyone. But but he, at least he's big. <laughs> he's big and he's 10. That counts for a lot in this business, man. They all do these things that are so fucking annoying that it completely, at least for me, undoes how, undoes, undoes how good they are in the ring. Like, Kenny... Mm-hmm is an amazing wrestler once in a generation type talent when it comes to in between the ropes bell to bell he's fucking amazing i will never take that away from him i will tip my hat to him but some of his promos that he does is just unbearable like they just oh go off the God. rails i thought yeah. the whole point of having callus come in was so callus could do all the talking so callus will talk and then kenny talks and it defeats the whole purpose. Instead of Kenny just wearing a suit and standing there and let Callis do all the talking, and then Kenny does cool shit in the ring, I feel like this would work a lot better. And then the Cody is- acts like fucking, what is he, like Mike Hager from the fucking Fatal Fury games? He just cosplays <laughs> as some random fucking mayor wrestler guy. It is just, he's an un- insufferable prick, and it undoes how good he could be in the ring. I just don't give a fuck. Like one of the very first things he did in AEW was do like a, a knock at Triple H. It's like, why? Oh, stupid sledgehammer of the steam. <laughs> why? Legendary. We get it. You work there, okay? We got, we understand that. Like no one gives a fuck anymore, man. Move on. Whatever. <laughs> it seems like his ultimate goal is to move on. I, he's never really there. He just like shows up and it's the same type of match. It's the same thing. It just, it's, it's played out at this point. He hasn't done anything like super interesting and cool in AEW since what? Fucking him and him versus brother. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That was a good yeah. match. I can't, yeah. this is coming from a guy who doesn't even like AEW. I don't know. From what I've seen, it's just like, it's the same thing with every 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 program he's in. It's I don't know. His weekly defense is when he was the uh, TV champion. TNT. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. The TNT TV. Didn't watch those challenge. Uh, the point is just like he was doing kind of like what John Cena did when he had the U.S. belt, like uh, like yeah, that like one run where he would just defend it every week, and he was doing it against people. Who he were wants like, to be the Miz. <laughs> doesn't him and doesn't him and brandy have a show coming out yeah like I probably think, yeah. they do yeah they do on uh tnt or tbs i can't remember who the fuck is gonna watch that uh i think they're trying to parlay maybe people that like her from like real housewives that sort of thing she was on that one of them like real oh, housewives really? of atlanta or something like that yeah um She's kind of insufferable too. But yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I was just like, okay, guys. There, there, there are two like, people who have ideas. There, there are people who have ideas and money and control. And unfortunately, their ideas aren't terribly good. And they're in a point of control where nobody really tells them no because it's just like, it's not really hurting anybody. So just go do it. And then it just is. Yeah, right. As long as it's still making some money, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to continue to do mediocre or just above mediocre stuff cody does this thing as well and jim ross kind of did this too with uh him saying that randy orton was the best wrestler in the world and people gave him shit for it because he's in the he works for a company actively with a the guy who is their champion a, a guy who a lot of people say is the the best wrestler in the world they do this weird thing where they're like well I'm just giving my opinion. Uh, like, am I not allowed to have opinions anymore? As people oh, yeah. are giving their opinions about what they said. Well, and they, America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they act like they're beyond reproach for for their opinions, and it, it feels like sometimes 
you know, they'll, they'll do this thing where they're like, well, I, you know, we, we live in this age of social media where everybody is so, uh, they're so sensitive, you know, people will really jump all over, you know, what they, what you say online. And it's like, yeah, cause you guys say stupid shit in public all the time. So of course people are going to give you shit about it online. They, yeah. It's okay I mean, you... sometimes for people to just say, yeah, I said something really dumb, my bad. And that's it. You don't have to do like this half-ass apology. Like, I'm sorry I offended you or you know, like a double down on the stupid thing you said. At the end of the day, it's professional wrestling. And you should just take the reaction and be like, I did it. And then just like back out. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I, 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 no one's saying you can't have an opinion. Uh, people are just pointing out that you have a shitty opinion. And even All then, right, if move on. About it, then good. They're talking about Jim Ross. Cool. Good. Yeah. He's on that. He's on that TV show, and if you hate him, then come and shake your fist at him. <laughs> shake your fist at the old man shaking his fist at the cloud. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. Sheeta versus Britt Baker, which should be a real good match. I gotta yeah. imagine they finally put the belt on Britt Baker. Britt, hopefully. Yeah, he uh, has been one of those people who's just like improved a lot, like in every way, like every time like i i'm only really like a quarterly watcher a lot of the time with it but like every time i see her i'm like oh wow she's good oh wow she's getting better <laughs> like it's always yeah. like an upward trend so that could probably be say, match of the night probably yeah maybe. yeah quite possibly yeah that's, that should be a good one i I'd, i would be shocked if brit doesn't get the belt um the main event is Omega, Cassidy, and Pac, which should be a, a solid three-way match. No one has been able to confirm if it's just a straight-up triple threat or like a three-way dance where people get eliminated. So I'm I'm not sure how that's gonna go. Well, they haven't really had a triple threat like for a belt like before, really, have they? So yeah, I think this is the first time. So I I think this should be good. I mean, obviously Omega's gonna win, but I I mm -hmm. would love to see how it kind of plays out maybe they'll play it into orange cassidy getting his bell rung a couple of weeks ago and that could play a part in it i'm not i'm not sure uh are omega and pack kind of even with each other as far as their records go i don't know yeah i'm, I'm, I'm not I know too sh sure ones, but that's a... yeah I, I could see cassidy taking the fall to kind of protect pack versus omega and have them finally have kenny really kind of decisively beat them. I mean, I know that they've decisively beat each other before, but I mean, you know, just in on a big stage for the title to really say that he's got one over on on Pac. Uh the think, pre oh sorry, go ahead. I think the story is gonna be just Cassidy is going to have Omega beat. Pac's gonna stop him and then like be the reason he doesn't win and then those two will go fuck off into a feud for another couple months, month or so, like something like that. Yeah. Because like the done a good job of building up cassidy and i don't know one way or another like cassidy is kind of like this this is the center of the wheel that the spokes go into so we'll see but i think i don't think anybody thinks kenny omega is losing the belt here right yeah right no yeah, i feel no. like in a match like this every once in a while they just got to shock us and actually have like the champion or the favorite to win just straight up blues because this match is going to be good but it definitely seems like it's filler until you know, Kenny can kind of run through some of the other challengers that are lurking. Yeah. It, it seems like this is all building towards Hangman to eventually build himself back up and take the belt from him. But uh, again, that's one of those things. And I know, Fro, you've you, you got your opinions on Hangman, but I feel like they're waiting too long to build him up. But I guess maybe they're going to try to wait till whenever All Out is. When is All Out? Summer? In the summer, yeah. So, so I could see him doing it uh, there because AEW has done a pretty good job of not having too many people have belts for too long. Although a lot of people have criticized uh, Sheeta for having the belt for as long as she did, but I think a lot of that is like pandemic stuff, and I I, I don't really put the blame on Sheeta for how her reign yeah, right. has gone. I feel like the, she kind of got no. put into some bad positions. You know, and, you know, people were like, "Well, I." can't wait for Britt Baker to get the belt because then, you know, you can have a champion that can talk. And it's like, well, yeah, duh, because the champion right now doesn't really speak a ton of English. So it's like, 
Of course, she's not going to be sitting there cutting 15 minute promos about how great she is because these shows are too too busy on a weekly basis anyway. Like, it's fine having one of your champions just show up and kick ass. Like, you can get away with that on these type of shows. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off, guys. No, you're good. Uh, Serena Deeb versus Riho should be a good match. That's on the pre show. I've been jokingly calling the uh, NWA Women's Championship the AEW Women's TNT Championship because (laughs) it's almost like it's a secondary belt for the the women. Serena Deeb has been fantastic since uh, coming to AEW. I have really, really been impressed with her. The match she had with Red Velvet was really good. Uh, She's had some good matches with Thunder Rosa. I, I. I hope that uh, Serena can possibly move into challenging Brit for the, for the belt down the line. There's a lot of good women in that division. The division is starting to build itself quite well. I know that was kind of a big uh, criticism of AEW for a while, but they seem to have corrected it after that tournament. So excited to see how that plays out. I think the women are probably my favorite part of AEW. Yeah, I can see that. Like they've done a very good job of building up uh, what they have, and they feel like wwe like with all their like talent hoarding made it kind of hard to scoop up like a lot of the better women like you have like tony storm doing nothing and like a couple other girls who are like really good just kind of fucked off like not doing much of anything just because they have so much talent there and they give them so little time on a whole not saying that they give them too little time i'm just saying there's not enough for not enough food for the amount of mouths that they need to feed time wise yeah, right. Is where AEW's kind of got it right, and as long as they keep like putting the right amount of time aside for them, like they'll be fine. They'll grow organically, and you can see that these girls are getting better and better, like all the time. Well, speaking of time, we are out of time. Thank you for listening to the Accidental Wrestling Fan. Make sure you like and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, subscribe on YouTube. Make sure that you buy T-shirts from us at tee.pub/lic slash ddt shirts there is a memorial day sale going on right now uh 35 off all the merchandise on our store so check that out and of course be on the lookout for the next few episodes of toff they'll be uploaded at some point over this long memorial day weekend so uh, enjoy your weekend stay safe enjoy double or nothing if you're watching that and remember to tuck your channel